Hello world, welcome back to a third in the series of the AR Battle Cards uh, video blog. Welcome back if you're still with me, I, uh, I thank you very much. Okay, cracking straight on with it. Um, I'm just going to update you with what I've been doing over the past uh, couple of weeks, where I am with the project and uh, how it looks. Uh, I'll show you some nice sort of uh, screen recordings as well. Uh, that's coming up shortly. Okay, so far what I have managed to do is create a user interface around the battle card system. Now that might not sound like much but it had proven a bit of a challenge. I can't actually build a user interface in Flash Builder or there are ways of doing it however they tend to be a bit complicated. Um, so I found the best method it was actually building uh, a special user interface uh, that looked good in Flash uh, then export that as a uh, what's called an SWC file and then re-import that in Flash Builder. Importing an SWC file, what it does is it makes things easier when you want to uh, include uh, the various aspects of uh, the user interface. So if you've drawn a user interface, it can be quite easy to call them up within the code as what they do is they appear as class files. So what do you do? You include uh, the SWC file as, as part of your project and like you were to call upon another class file that you've created, you basically call the user interface. That was the easy part and I managed to do that fairly easily. Two issues arose. One, uh, the layering. At the moment, the video layer, the one that actually displays the webcam for the viewers, that had, let's just say, that, that appeared above the user interface layer. So I had to use what was called viewport layers and trying to sort the Z sorting, similar to what you would do uh, on a website. I had to try and get the Z sorting so that the user interface appeared above the, the video layer. So that was a little bit of an issue. Now issue number two is what took me quite a while. The problem was I tried to access a child element of the user interface. For example, I had a nice dynamic text field uh, that I wanted to access and then change the text of. I will be using a lot more of this later, particularly if I was going to do sort of uh, nice dynamic um, speedographs and bits and pieces like that for uh, the actual battle uh, fight sequence. However, accessing the child was proving a little bit difficult and I spent about two hours searching for a tutorial that I actually had in my bookmarks. So it's a bit of problematic. Uh, however, now that it's all working, it's actually quite easy. And, and now that I know how to do it, it's proven quite easy. So those were the two problems that I had, uh, both importing and accessing the child elements. Okay, so what I've managed to do is, first of all, I've managed to shrink down the code. Now, I've shrunk down the code uh, in the sense that I've made it uh, more object oriented friendly, so everything is nice, simple, and conci uh, concise. Uh, there are various elements in their separate class files that I then call up nice and easily, uh, which makes the main bit of code, the, the main run code, quite a bit smaller, and it uses loops and bits and pieces to make things uh, a lot simpler. I'd also like to thank uh, Rob Hawkes, who is a fellow course mate at Bournemouth University, He's actually done some augmented reality before uh, he did it for his second year and I'd like to thank him because he uh, created a nice tutorial that really helped me understand the uh, multi-marker system and I've actually um, modified his code. Uh, I, I once had a, a fairly long code that worked on individual markers and it, it all got quite complicated, uh, especially when it comes to the, this next crucial bit which is um, what happens when uh, you put two markers on the screen. Uh, the problem I had before, it was firing two events at the same time and it caused all sorts of problems later on down the line uh, of coding because these two events that fired at the same time would overwrite various variables. Anyway, very complicated, I won't bore you with it. Anyway, thanks to Rob, what I have managed to do is make a nice, clean, concise uh, coding that basically it stores all the events into a, an array so I can have as many markers as I like. I don't have to limit myself on um, various variables. So what I've done is managed to shorten the code so everything's now simple and concise. And basically I can now continue on building the interaction. So at the moment I've got no interaction. 
it's a lot more polished than it was uh, when I last showed you. However, it's now uh, more polished, but it's lacking the interaction. That's what I'm gonna do over the next couple of weeks. So hopefully uh, with the next video, I should have uh, some interactions for you. Okay, so you just wanna see the video and the screencast of what I've managed to do so far, so I won't hold you back. Here's what it is. Bear in mind though, although it's more polished than it was before, one, it lacks the interaction that I had between, you know, the fuel going down. Uh, it does lack that. However, it does look a bit better than before. Uh, and I've included, I managed to make some nice fancy animations. I won't spoil it. I'll just show you it and uh, you can see what it's like. Okay, so this is the screen that you get uh, when you first uh, launch the game. Uh, and basically, all it is is Adobe Flash is asking, do you want to use the webcam? We need to click on Allow. And once the webcam has started, uh, you can see it's just a picture of my desk. I've worked out that it works best, and market detection works best when you have a single color. So I've tried to get a single color with these um, blank sheets of paper. Uh, however, I'm sure the final desk, when I create it, would just be a single white desk. Right, you've seen these cards before. Uh, I mentioned them to you last week. Basically, uh, you've got the image on one side and then the mark on the other side that when uh, you place it down on the field, you get a nice animation of the uh, the tank popping up out of the hole. Now, uh, it's only done that one so far and it will only uh, pop up out of the hole. Um, however, Hopefully, uh, hopefully, what will happen uh, is also I'll get it so that when you take the card away, uh, the tank will go back down, uh, down in the field. You've also at the top um, got uh, the dynamic text field that lets the user know when markers uh, have been added and removed. It's a little bit, a little bit different at the moment. It might change in future, but as you can see, you do have the uh, UI going around. So. Yeah, that's where we are at the moment. Just simply it detects markers, it displays a fancy animation, and lets the user know through the dynamic text field on uh, on what it is. So that's where it is at the moment. Uh, I'll update you when I've started to do some of the interactions as well. Thank you for watching. That is pretty much it I've got for the third in the video blog series for augmented reality battle cards. Uh, if you want any more information, um, you feel free to get in contact. I mean, I've got a Twitter account where normally I keep the latest up-to-date information as well. Uh, I've also got links uh, in the comment section below, particularly to uh, Rob Hawkes' uh, tutorial if you want to continue yourself. Uh, and also feel free to contact me uh, if you like. I mean, as I say, contact details are on the website below. Thank you very much for watching, and uh, I hope to see you in a couple of weeks. Goodbye, world. Take care.